All right, class, so this is a Alex topic that's called understanding the connection between vapor pressure, enthalpy of vaporization, and boiling point. And, you know, really the, the concept here is just the relationship between those different, um, you know, values. So let's just talk about those really quickly before we get into the problem. Um, when I think about vapor pressure, the, the way that I like to think about vapor pressure is if I have a, a watch glass and I've got my liquid on top of that watch glass, the vapor pressure is going to be sort of how quickly that liquid evaporates. So if I imagine two separate watch glasses here, so that, that represents my liquid, and let's say that this one vaporizes really quickly, and then this one's vaporizing really slowly. So right away, it's going to sort of, the first thing I might think of is that this liquid, it's easier to vaporize, so it, it vaporizes more quickly. This liquid, it's, it's less easy to vaporize. And so then we have to think about, well, why might that be? Why is this liquid easier to vaporize? Well, it's probably not stuck together as much, right? The molecules of this liquid are, are less stuck together than the molecules of this liquid over here. So what that means for our boiling point is that this sub substance would have a low boiling point and a high vapor pressure. So low boiling point, meaning that it's easy to make it boil. High vapor pressure, meaning that there's a lot of vapor. So when you think about vapor pressure, if I imagine putting a beaker over this watch glass and putting a beaker over this watch, so an upturned beaker over each of those, there would be a lot more of that vapor, that gas, of this substance in this space, right? The vapor pressure would be higher. Um, so that's the way that I, I think about vapor pressure. And then the last thing is the enthalpy of vaporization. So the delta H of vaporization will be low. So because delta H of vaporization is telling you how much energy does it take to make it go into the vapor phase, then this sort of will be the, the relationship. So over here, we've got a higher boiling point. We've got a lower vapor pressure and the delta H of vaporization will be high, will be large, um, will be bigger because it takes more energy to make it go from the liquid phase to the gaseous phase. So let's go ahead and answer these questions. So the first one is at one atmosphere of pressure, so we've got the same pressure. Substance E boils at 41 degrees, it's got a higher boiling point, and substance F boils, boils at one degree Celsius. So we've got a higher boiling point for E, a lower boiling point for F, so then it says, which has the higher enthalpy of vaporization? So we could sort of just use our chart over here. Well, that one with the higher boiling point will have the higher enthalpy of vaporization. So E should be my answer um, here. Now, this brings up a really good point, I think, about should you just memorize this or should you be able to, to come up with this on your own, right? And that's really what we're talking about in terms of critical thinking and being able to solve whatever type of problem I give you. If you just memorize this, then you're not necessarily learning, right? Um, you're, you're just sort of memorizing something and then trying to regurgitate, if this, then this. But that's not, that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to be able to draw this picture, come up with this independently, right? Be able to think about this critically and say, well, I know this is sort of the relationship. I can, I can um, you know, come up with the relationships on my own that's going to set you up, you know, to, to do more things as you as you go forward, right? You can apply your knowledge to a lot of different scenarios rather than just memorizing this and applying it, right? Come up with this on your own. That's the real key there. So enough ranting. I'll go ahead and answer the rest of the questions. The enthalpy of vaporization of substance C is bigger than substance D. So again, the enthalpy of vaporization. Well, actually, let's let's not think about this. Let's cover this up and, and see if we can come up with this answer on our own. So it says the enthalpy of vaporization of substance C is bigger than that of substance D. So it's going to be harder to make substance C boil. So which has the higher boiling point? I'm going to go for substance C because substance C is going to be harder for substance C to, to boil because it's got a, a higher enthalpy of vaporization. So let's do the last one. Well, we can just double check, right? Enthalpy of vaporization is bigger over here. Higher boiling point will be the same one. At 79 degrees Celsius, substance A has a vapor pressure of 143, a lower vapor pressure than substance B. B substance B has the higher vapor pressure. So we're asking about the enthalpy of vaporization. So again, if it takes more energy, right, to have a, um, you know, excuse me, if it has a higher vapor pressure, that means that it's easier for it to, to boil off. 
or if it has a lower vapor pressure, that means that it's harder for it to boil off. So again, you know, this is a little more confusing. Over here, our vapor pressure for the one that's harder to boil off, the vapor pressure will be lower. So lower vapor pressure will be a higher enthalpy of vaporization. So substance A will have the higher vapor uh, enthalpy of vaporization. So you need to sort of, you know, go through this, make sure that, that each one sort of makes sense. Um, drawing this picture out, I think, will, will really help you uh, as you as you go through these and make sure that they all make sense. All right.